programs that I did this week in the schools were really a lot of fun because I enjoy young people. And it's a, a great opportunity for them too because uh, for many kids this is their last stop. The public school is their last stop. They don't get a chance or don't find too many things uh, where someone's taken to a concert or this sort of thing. So when musicians come to a school and perform, it gives the kids a vision. It gives them an opportunity to maybe see themselves as a musician to perform. So there's something about jazz that related to uh, the similar well that I drew from when I was listening to the spiritual, that there was something there that was really special. And I wanted to get that sound on my violin. So that was a quest for me to take the violin in a different direction. And of course, a lot of people thought I had really had lost my mind because nobody does that on the violin. It was still something that was rare. But I knew that uh, it's something that I wanted to explore. And there wasn't anybody really at the time that I knew that I could study with on violin that taught improvisation. So, excuse me, so it was an interesting journey for me to, uh, to begin learning how to improvise on uh, the violin. Now, I played piano, so the transition of learning chords and things on piano was a lot easier than violin, but eventually, uh, it started happening on the violin. I started really searching and I began to figure out how to express myself in a new way on the instrument. And it was like starting all over again in a lot of ways.
Now, I knew that the violin was probably the earliest instrument that African Americans played as an instrument on plantations in the South. It was really one the, the, the violin and the banjo. Uh, there's a lot of information on the fiddle playing on plantations. A lot of it, uh, some of the documentation uh, is found in a few books by uh, Eileen Southern. And also there's a friend of mine named Julie Lieberman who did a whole thing on the blues fiddle. Which talks a little about, about uh, a lot of times the documentation of slaves on plantation with violence can be found in a lot of these, these pa newspapers that existed back in the 1800s where they would talk about the runaway slaves. And they might say that he had, uh, he, he took with him shoes, some extra pair of shoes and some clothing and his fiddle. So there were many, many fiddle players on plantations. So this fascinated me. I don't know a whole lot about fiddle music, but it, there's a style of fiddle music they call old time fiddling, which comes out of the style that African-Americans played on plantations. They now call that old time fiddling. And so there's a whole, uh, you know, genera generations of white fiddle players who have been influenced by those players. So I did some research on that and I actually found that there were bowed string instruments all over the continent of Africa. And I researched it and then I, there's a great uh, maker here who makes a lot of African instruments named Adimu. And Adi Mu, uh, he's never been to Africa. He looks at stuff. And musicians that come in from Africa love his work so much that they get him to make, make him instruments for them. So he made a few fiddles. And tonight's work is uh, when I started writing the music for this, the, some of the first places I was listening to, I was listening to a lot of music from Mali and from Ghana and from the, and, and Senegal. And as I listened to the music over a period of a few months, every day I was listening to that music. And one day it hit me about three in the morning and I went downstairs and started writing for these Africans. <laughs> 